Hi everybody. In today's video I'm going to show you a quick demo of how to export your SQL Server data to Excel. I realize SQL Server has a built-in way of doing this, but if you've ever tried it, it uh, doesn't work as well as I would like it. If it works for you, then this, this product may not be for you, but if you ever wanted to write a program, and I may turn this into a Windows service that can run this like on a scheduled basis, but you know, I, mo any project I've ever worked on for a you know a production database has SQL Server backups. But sometimes I've had you know had uh, support incidents where I had to go get a value from a backup, and it's kind of a pain because you got to restore the whole database just to get one value out. So having a, the ability to export the data to SQL, you know, and it's pretty simple. I'm going to go ahead and show you a, here's the, all the code it takes. It's three lines of code, and you could even write this as one, but you just pass in the uh, connection string and the path to export to, and that's all you have to do. So, and I'll, this project, the reason why it exists, and it was so easy for me to write, is I have two NuGet package, one called datajuggler.net7, which reads the database schema for datatier.net and dbcompare. And then I have another project, NuGet package data juggler.accelerate. And if you combine these two, I can read and write to Excel very easily and read the database schema very easily. So I wrote this in one day, so it wasn't actually very difficult to write. It was just, I, I woke up in the middle of the night this morning, so I wrote it between 2 and 7 in the morning. So <clears throat> now we're going to go ahead and just show you a quick demo. That's enough of me talking, but I just wanted to show you what we're going to build. So I am going to open up Visual Studio. I'm going to create a new window, a new project. I'm going to create a Windows form project. I could use a console too, but I'm going to just use a Windows form because it'll go real quick. Um, let's see. I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll just create a, a little demo project here. GitHub probably got a demo SQL snapshot, something like that. And we'll call it demo SQL snapshot and hit next. It's going to be using .NET 7. Hit create. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is rename my form to main form.csharp. Just a little better. Now I'm going to close that, save it, because I've found if you don't do this and you make any UI changes here, it for some reason doesn't work. But okay, I'm going to make a few changes to the form. I'm going to change auto scale mode to none. I'm going to change the font to Verdana 12 so I can see, because I'm partially visually impaired. Thank God I quit playing pool for a living. I still say that every day. Although now I'd be happy to have any money coming in, but that's another story. All right, uh, stretch, background image layout, and I'm gonna import an image. Graphics, I've got this image called black image somewhere. There we go. Where is it? Why am I not seeing my little black image? Okay, maybe it's that one. That's, oh, that's fine. It wasn't really the one I wanted to use, but that'll work. Okay, so now we've got our little uh, form set up. I'm going to add some NuGet packages real quick. I'm going to add data juggler .sql snapshot install and then accept and then we're going to add data juggler .win .controls. Okay, so I've got my little project set up. Oops. Now what we're going to do is change our startup position from Windows default to center screen. We're going to add a label text box control. And as the name says, it's just a label and a text box. I'm going to make this a little bigger. 
I'm going to make this, I'm going to call this a connection text box. I'm going to set the label text to connection string and kind of abbreviate it so it fits. Or I could make the label bigger, but don't really need to. All right, and we're going to change the... My dog is about to wake up, so I may have to pause this video for just a second. Hang on one second. I'm going to pause the video. I'll be right back. I'm back. Okay, while I was getting my dog out on the patio, I decided to change the second one. The second one's actually going to be a label text box browser control. And we're going to just set a folder. I got to do a little bit of setup work for this. Okay. With this, we're going to have to change the theme from wood to dark, back to dark, so it sets the label color. And I'm going to set the label text to, this is going to be the path to export to. I'm going to, you can either type in the name, that you can just type in the path, or you can browse. I'm going to set the browse type to be a, uh, a file, I mean a folder. So you come up here, browse type, somewhere, browse type. We're going to select a folder, but then we're going to just add a file name to it because this file doesn't have to exist when you're selecting it. Okay, and this is going to be called the path control. Okay. And then now, the only thing we need is a button. All right, so this is the button. We're going to change the theme to black, to darkening, so it kind of matches. We're going to set the font to bold, just to kind of match the rest of our little form. Now, that's, that's a bug on Visual Studio, not uh, my control, but I'll set the left to like 600, so our little button comes back. That's because I don't know why, but the, the auto scale mode we set it to false. It wasn't. I mean, it was none, and it was instead of font, so it's not supposed to do that. It didn't do that in the .NET Framework version. Okay, so that's all we need. Now I will tell you, there's not a progress bar in this, and a large database. This will take a while, but for now we're going to do a really small database as a test so let me set our button name this is going to be our export button and now we're gonna click here click you don't have to do this but this is regionizer 2022 if you if you're interested I'll put the link in the video description and I'm gonna just click format document it will just format the whole page and uh, this class is the main form for this app. Okay. I'm going to turn on auto commenting, hit control shift, and now we're going to build out our button. And I'll show you how easy this is. Let me close all this stuff. Okay. So now we're going to add using data juggler <coughs> dot SQL snapshot. And then all you have to do is say string connection string equals text box. What did I call? I think I, I think I still have this called label. Yep. Hang on. Let me look at our little form here. What did I call this? Connection text box. That's what I call. It. Okay. String connection string equals connection text box dot text. All right, and I'll show you how I set connection strings if you find it useful. You can download it from GitHub. Set the connection string. String path equals uh, path control dot text. All right, and then now we have a uh, SQL export SQL hang on result SQL export result the result equals SQL snap cell uh, C 
SQL Excel bridge. Sorry, I wrote this last night. I haven't used this a lot. Dot export snapshot connection string path, and then if you want to change the, um, I'm leaving a pin partial grew it is true. That just means the file name will be saved with some random digits so that it's unique in a folder. And then I set the font name to Verdana and the font size to 11. You can override those if you like. And that's all you have to do. So set the result. Okay, now we're going to do one more thing. And I realize we're 10 minutes into a video to show three lines of code. But I made a little... Uh, I made a demo project yesterday that's on GitHub already, but I wanted to go ahead and uh, just make one to show you how quick it is to build out a little demo project here. And I'm going to go to that project now to grab this copied image I made. So I'm going to go to GitHub, SQL snapshot test, and I've got an images folder. I'm going to just copy the whole images folder. Okay, and now I'm going to go to our demo SQL snapshot, paste in our images folder. Okay, so now I'm going to create a picture box on our little uh, form here. Solution, toolbox, common controls, and we'll grab a picture box. Okay. And we're just going to call this complete image, something like that. And I'll make it a little wider. And I'm going to set the background image layout to stretch. And the background image is going to be that copied image that we just copied. So projects GitHub demo. SQL snapshot, images, complete. So that just gives us our little complete image that's fine display. What I'll do is take it and format a line middle so it shows up in a decent place. We're going to hide it in the beginning. So we'll just say hidden, visible is false. And now what we're going to do is add a timer. So go to Solution Control, I mean go to Toolbox, Components. I'll just add a timer that way, it's just as easy. And I'm going to just call this Timer, rename it. I'm going to set the interval to 3000. And I'm going to create the tick event. I'm going to select this right here and say Regionizer. Format selection. I'm going to move over our little button click because I prefer it like that. Okay, so now we have our timer. All we're going to do here is timer.stop because we only want only run once. And then we're going to say complete image.visible equals false. Hide. Now what we're going to do is say uh, complete image dot visible equals true show and then we're going to be start the timer start okay so now it'll run and then we'll go look at it so let's uh, run our little app okay so now to set the connection string you can, uh, I'll put the link to this in the video description, but it's basically github datatier.net. Okay, now if you down, you clone this project, one of the, uh, there's a tools folder in the, uh, in the uh, download directory, or you can just download this as a zip file. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you, this is connection string builder. You might think it's worth the price right there or worth leaving a star and a like on this video for. I'm going to type in my server name. I'm going to type in my one of my database names that I've, this is untested territory, live on recorded video. Not really live, but we're going to say build connection string. Now there's one thing we need to add and I need to update my little connection string here. I've updated a couple, but we need to say encrypt equals false because with Microsoft.data.sql client 5.0 
actually 4.0 onwards if you don't add this they they expect your database to be encrypted so add this unless your database is encrypted so that test and copy to my clipboard and that goes away in about one more second just like we're about to do so I'll show you how we're going to do that so we're going to say we're going to paste our connection string now the path to export I'm going to just put this in my temp folder so I'll just go temp select folder now but I'm going to add a file name to that we need to so we're going to call this pixel data oops pixel database dot net dot xlsx sounds good and we didn't change our button to click me so we're going to do that in just a second but I'm going to go ahead and just run this this might take just a second because it's got to read the database schema it didn't take long now we're going to go to my temp folder and there is our Excel file. It adds that, just to see that, that's the append partial GUID. It adds some uh, 12 characters of a partial GUID, just so if you do this nightly to the same folder, you know, it, it, it'll, you can still have the same file name. All right, and now we'll open up our data, and I'll just show you. Here's the tables in my uh, database. So I've got a table activity log. This is my local copy, so it's not as long as the live server would be got some error log tables I don't really use file log uh, help article and you can any of these I, I, I do a um, auto fit column width on the column headers but I don't do it on the text because some columns are really long you might have a in you know people don't people paste a book sometimes so that's why I didn't do it you can always select all and just go like this and it auto fits everything so um, now you'll notice this is timestamp I didn't you may have to like change this to a date you know and then that's you're all good okay and that's uh, just some data from that side this is another table so it's just one tab for every table in your database and uh, and then it exports all the rows so it's I'll probably add some features coming up to have it uh, also have a tab for schema if you want to export your database schema so over time you can compare you know what's changed and there's some other features I may do I'll talk really quickly if you're still here we'll just go to the uh, github site for this which is just github slash SQL snapshot here's a few uh, ideas of some possible things I may do in the future just ability to only write changes since the last snapshot which will make it really a lot less uh, writing for large databases. And then also, as I mentioned, export the database schema and also possibly some ways to, uh, you know, copy data from one server to another. So where you could import from the Excel because the way Data Juggler Accelerate works, it's just as simple for me to, to go the other way. But at this version, we just write the database schema and exported to Excel, and it's pretty simple. Let me know what you think. Is it worth the price? All right, have a great day.